Hi everyone, my name is Kristen Tuchko, also known as Harpist KT or That Harp Girl on TikTok, and we're gonna do a Q&A today. So you guys have asked some really interesting questions, and I have a rather long list here. So I'm gonna get cozy in this chair today with my cup of tea, and without further ado, we'll get started. How long have you been playing the harp? I have been playing for 25 years. Why did you decide to do harp, and was it your first instrument? I decided to start harp when I saw a harpist perform live, and I was inspired. My parents at the time wanted me to learn an instrument, and I got to pick, so I chose chose the harp. And yes, it was my first instrument and then I started piano a year later. How did you get started playing the harp? Because it's not a very common instrument. I started by renting, renting a lever harp, and then I signed up for private lessons. Thankfully, there was a teacher in my city, so I was able to start that way. At what moment did you choose the harp as a musical instrument to study and master? What appeals most about the instrument? When I was trying to decide what I was going to do after high school, and I, I knew I wanted to go to university, and I had to pick a major, and I wanted to pick something I was interested in. So I was super interested in music, in general. Long story short, I actually wanted to be a composer and I applied for composition in school, not harp. And I had to audition on a, an instrument and I ended up auditioning on harp and they liked me so much they admitted me for harp. That's kind of how I decided I wanted to be a harpist. The moment I started, first day of classes, I loved it so much that I, was, I never turned back. Oh, and what appeals most to me about the instrument, I think it's all the different sounds and the cool sound effects that you can create. Where did you study and who did you study with? I did my undergrad at McGill University with Jennifer Schwartz and then I did my master's degree at Yale University. University with June Han and then after I went back to McGill and did a one-year artist diploma. Between all that schooling I also studied with amazing amazing harpists at summer festivals and I've also taken tons of supplementary lessons with other harpists around the world. I'm so blessed to have known and studied and mentored by all of these amazing harpists in my career. How do you like to warm up? So every day I sit down at the harp for the first time in the day I start by doing Salzado conditioning exercises and they are just going through with each finger and each hand working their way up the harp and I use this as a way to just work every single finger and make sure that the fingers are doing as they should be technique wise and then after that I do a set of scales. Can you talk about your daily practice routine and what you do and for how long? I'm gonna admit I do not practice every day. I only practice when I have something I have to prepare for or I have work that needs to get done. If I have a wedding coming up, I'm gonna sit down and just sort out all my music for that and play through it and make sure everything's in good order. Right now I have some sheet music on my stand for some full song covers of my arrangements that I wanna do for YouTube and I just gotta sit down and do the practice work. So it really depends like what I have coming up. How often do you have to change strings? As a professional, I should be changing my strings once a year. Maybe the lower gut could get away with it once every other year, but right now I'm not changing my strings that often because it's expensive, it's like $500 US. I just changed all of my harp strings back in like April because I was getting my harp regulated and they needed to be brand new strings on it. So if I don't change all of my strings all at once, I usually change them when they're starting to sound bad um, or if they break, then I have to put a new one on. My question is, how heavy is a concert harp with over 50 strings? First off, this is the largest they come, and mine has 47 strings. And my harp in particular weighs 81 pounds. Why don't harpists play with their pinkies? So pinkies are too short and too weak to reach the strings and pluck the strings properly. Do you memorize every string? Not technically, you kind of get used to that on the harp after you study it for a little bit. In terms of like figuring out where the notes are, if you can see on the harp, there are different colored strings. The red ones are C's and the black ones are F's and those help us figure out where our notes are and just orient us. So if those colors were not there, I would have no idea what any of the strings are. What does harp sheet music look like? I happen to have some here to show you. This is Rhapsody by Marcel Grangenet. And this is what a harp showpiece looks like. I also have Handel's harp concerto. Lots of black notes. How do you read harp music? It's kind of like reading any other instrument. You kind of get used to it. You always start by learning a new instrument really, really gradually, right? So when you're starting on harp and learning music for the first time as well, you'll start by learning two, three notes at a time. And then from there, you'll just gradually go up in level. What's your opinion on the lyre? I happen to have one here. My opinion is they're a really cute little instrument. They are very different from a harp though. If you're looking to learn harp, don't get this one first and then you'll upgrade to a harp because they are totally different instruments. What made you decide to start up on YouTube? Long plans coming or spontaneous one day? I've had my YouTube channel, I think for like 10 years now. I was using it as a place to just upload full length videos, the performances, and then it was only 
recently that I decided to start uploading more like content creation uh, videos. So to answer your question, I think it was kind of spontaneous that it just happened. <laughs> What is the most difficult and interesting thing about being a music YouTuber? One of the most difficult things is having to perform consistently, especially just being able to always produce music. So that means I have to like be practicing and arranging. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of behind the scenes work. I know I can take time off if I want to. There's no pressure, but I feel it's my calling <laughs> to do so. And like, this is just what I've decided. And then one of the most interesting things I think is the people. It's so interesting to meet so many other people from this platform. Also, the partnerships are really interesting, doing collabs with other content creators, doing brand deals. And also you never know who's watching. Like for all I know, Taylor Swift could be watching this right now. <laughs> Do you make your own music? I don't currently compose. I was composing a bit when I was in high school. I do improvise and there is a difference between the two, if you're curious. Composing is the art of writing and tweaking and modifying it. Whereas improvising is kind of you just sit down at an instrument and just play whatever first comes to mind and you kind of just play off of what you're playing in the moment. And it, you wouldn't necessarily be able to recreate that again. I don't compose right now. It just takes a lot of time and it's just not really where my interest lies right now. I am a performer at heart, not a composer but maybe down the road I will maybe get back into it. Do you play any other instruments? If so, sample. Yes, I play the piano and here's a sample. Is there any genre of music or perhaps a song that you particularly enjoy playing on the harp? My favorite genre is generally music that goes against the stereotype of what the harp sounds like. I just like showing off the instrument and making people turn their heads and be like, whoa, how did you do that on the harp? And then in general, I love video game music. I think it sounds so cool and it always works so well on the harp. Oh, and my current favorite song to play on the harp kind of goes against what I just said. Um, it's Fireflies by Owl City. I think it just feels so good in the fingers and it just brings such a smile to my face every time I play it. Have you ever played live on a concert or in front of a large audience? I get this a lot, I guess because most of my content I film behind this white wall. <laughs> so yes, before the pandemic hit, I was freelancing full-time as a harpist. Pretty much anything that needed a harp, I was doing it. I was moving my harp two to three times a week sometimes. Weddings, events, I've also done a lot of orchestral work. I've done chamber music, I've done recordings. I've also done like huge shows. I performed once with Josh Groban, and then also a really memorable concert was playing with Evanescence and Lindsey Sterling in like a joint concert. Super, super fun. Is your only job a harpist or do you have others? My main job is being a harpist. I also do a couple things on the side involving art and graphic design, just because I love it so much. I've done art commissions like drawings. I've also done uh, wedding calligraphy and I also work uh, part-time at a record label designing music albums, which is kind of in the same field, combining my love of music and art. If not for the harp, what career path might you have chosen? I think I would have been a composer. You have a method to get over burnout, especially demotivation to play. Everyone goes through this lack of motivation to practice or play their instrument. There's a few ways you can tackle this. My first thought is if you want a break, take it. And just like truly don't even touch your instrument, take a break. Breaks are a good thing. One thing you can try doing is just going outside and being inspired by nature and be inspired by other musicians. Go see a concert. Maybe if you're learning a specific piece, go and listen to several different recordings of artists that you admire and see how they interpret the music and be inspired by that. In terms of like motivation to play, try and switch up your routine. So right now you see how my harp is facing the window. If I ever wanna switch it up, if I'm getting bored, I actually just like rotate my harp the other way. So I just see something else. Also, sometimes windows are distracting. Get yourself excited to get stuff done. Make a to-do list, set a deadline for yourself. And then from there, you can kind of like piece it together and be like, okay, well, I wanna be at this point by this day this point by this day, working yourself backwards. And then you can kind of just pace it out and be like, okay, well, what do I need to get done each day in order to get there? So when you make a plan, like a game plan like that, it gives you a little bit more motivation because then you're excited to get things done. Because sometimes we just look at something and it's like, this is a really big piece of work. How am I ever gonna get this done? And we get overwhelmed. Small parts, small rewards. Also speaking of rewards, <laughs> something that's really helpful is like make your instrument fun again by bringing something else you enjoy into your practice room. I have a nice cup of tea with me right now. I sometimes like to practice in the evenings when it's like nice and cozy, get my nice little cup of tea. Also bring like some chocolate with me. So then while I'm practicing, I can like reward myself. <laughs> what is a good practice routine and how do you get a piece finished? 
I seem to get to a certain point with a piece and never feel like it's finished and can play it easily no matter how much I can practice it. I feel your frustration. Speaking on what I just talked about with like motivation and stuff, you can totally apply those points. One thing that might be helpful is being inspired by another harpist in the form of lessons, possibly, if you're not already taking lessons. I feel like this is something your teacher could work through with you um, if you're taking weekly lessons. But if you're not taking lessons, if you're learning on your own, when I say take a lesson, it doesn't mean sign up for full-time lessons. There's a lot of harpists that offer one-off lessons. I'd suggest reaching out to them and being like, hey, I just want one lesson. I'm learning this piece. I'd love to have your input on it and then be inspired that way. Like I've done that so many times where I've taken specific music to teachers. We workshopped on that piece and it was just so inspirational. Like I had stuff to work on for like a whole month. Always find something new within the piece that you can do something slightly differently or you wanna try and be extra musical in this point. Or maybe if it's something technical that maybe you're stuck. Try and figure out what that problem is and then address it, what do I want to happen, and then figure out how you need to go there. If it's something you can't figure out on your own, maybe that's when a teacher is a necessity to jump in and be like, actually, if you practice it like this, you can get to that point. What do you do when you don't have the energy to practice, even if you want to? I've totally been going through this exact same thing all week. I've been like on my couch, exhausted, and I'm like, oh, I want to practice. Like, I need to practice. <laughs> and I'm like, but I don't have the energy to do it. If you're a coffee drinker, have a shot of espresso. <laughs> I don't drink coffee very often, but like it kind of helps me just like, get a little bit of energy back. Also, like you could tell yourself like, okay, I know I want to do this. I don't have energy to do it. But, like I can't do that next thing until I do my practicing. Can't check social media until I do this thing. And it works. It's forcing yourself to get it done. Have you ever wanted to quit playing the harp? Yep several times actually. Surprisingly, I wanted to quit when I was still learning it, like throughout middle school and high school, um, and not while I was trying to make it in the world as a freelance musician. I know a lot of musicians end up quitting after school when it just isn't working out for them, um, and they end up switching careers. And it was not my parents keeping me in it, it was my own self. I don't wanna give this up. And it was the same with piano. I had the same thoughts. I'm like, I wanna quit piano, I wanna quit. And I was like, no, like I've gotten this far. Like I wanna, like in my mind, it was like, I wanted to finish it. Even though there's, <laughs> there's never really a finish line for learning an instrument, <laughs> but I still was like, I wanna do this. Like I wanna get this done. And here I am today. Two questions here. Do you have any hobbies? I already mentioned my hobbies are art and graphic design. Also, I love skiing and I like hiking. I love being in the outdoors. Other hobbies, I love baking and cooking. Uh, there was one point in my life I was trying to find the best chocolate chip cookie recipe. Oh, and also one of my favorite hobbies, which I can't believe I didn't lead with this, is fishing like obsessed. And second question, when you have negative thoughts, is there a way to overcome them? If I ever get negative thoughts, I always have to debunk them. I have to be like, okay, is this really a truth or is this a lie? And then I get to choose, like, do I want to believe this lie and spiral? <laughs> or do I want to say like, no, this is not happening today. Then I try to counteract it with uh, three positives. How many years does it take to get good at playing the harp from the students? That I've been working through, the patterns that I'm seeing is about three years. To get up to like an advanced level, I always say like eight years, but again I've seen it different in everyone. I see students going into university level and they've only been playing hard for five years, you know, so like it really depends on the person and how much you commit and how much you practice. Is it ever too late to learn harp? Definitely no. It is never too late. I have students coming to me who most of them are adults. I have students that come in at age 60 wanting to learn the harp. You can totally learn harp at any age. Do you think having knowledge of other instruments helps you understand the harp better or is it a completely different thing? Definitely it helps you understand the harp better. For example, piano music is very similar to harp music and we both read treble and bass claps. The ideas of rhythm and notes and the musical language in general, it's quite universal across all instruments. So if you have a musical background, it definitely helps you start learning a new instrument much quicker, but it is not a requirement to learn the harp specifically. Where do you get all your sheet music from? Specifically things like video games. I make all my arrangements. Usually how I get started is I just go on Google and I search piano music for whatever I'm looking for. From there, I also listen to the song itself, kind of follow along in the music and see like if it lines up enough. Then from there, I make it harpable and I add things to it. I have trouble reading music while playing the harp. 
With the piano, it's easier because you can rest your fingers on the keys and really feel the intervals, but for some reason with the harp, it's so different. Do you have advice for reading music and playing at the same time? Like anything in life, just give it time. The more music that you learn and do, you'll get better at reading music. In terms of your comment about intervals, it's the same thing on harp. It's exactly, it's, think of it the same way. If it works for you on piano, it's gonna work for you on harp too. The, there are known intervals on the instrument that we know of what they feel like and what they look like. Start thinking of your sheet music with more of the visual. And this is what I teach in my lessons of recognizing certain aspects in sheet music when we're learning it, is specifically the visual. By shape, patterns, by the directions the notes are moving, and then how the notes are moving, by steps or skips. From there, you can go through and kind of just recognize those patterns with your eye before you start on the instrument and kind of just study the music before you start playing it. I also call it micro memorizing, memorizing in small parts. Just the nature of the instrument, we have to look at our strings and then we look at the music and back at the strings, music. Memorize parts that need a look at the strings of where you're going. Memorize those spots so you can look and then know exactly where you're coming back after. How long do you practice or play a song before moving on to another one? And do you move on once you've recorded it? It really depends on the song that I'm doing. If it's for social media, I pretty much practice and learn these songs and arrange them, like the short 30 seconds of the excerpts, within like 10, 20 minutes. That's how long it takes me. It depends, right? If it's a really in-depth arrangement or really complicated play, playing-wise, I'll take a little bit more time than that. Like some songs have taken me an hour just to record it. At that point, I should have just stopped and practiced it properly, but I usually can do these things in like a few takes. And then after, it depends on the song. If it's a popular one like Great Fairy Fountain, definitely gonna be playing that one quite a bit. So I do keep that around <laughs> and I do revisit it every now and then. I do move on once it's recorded, unless people want the arrangement of it, then I'm like, okay, I gotta put this in a pile of music to write out the arrangement at some point. I've always wanted to learn the harp, but the cost of one is like a year's worth of mortgage payments. How can I get one just to get started with? That's a really good question because harps like this one are very expensive. I am very grateful to have been gifted this from my grandparents when I was younger. And at the time, this one cost 15,000. Now with inflation and everything, it goes for about $25,000. When you're looking to start the harp, don't think of it like you need to start on what I have. Most people begin on lever harps and they're way more affordable. I tell students to start by renting harps to begin with, then you have time to get adjusted and situate it with your instrument, getting to know the sounds and like the quality of it and everything. And then when you're interested in purchasing your own, then you can do a bit of research. So lever harps, to get like a nice quality lever harp, they are roughly around the two or $3,000 price range. If you want like a bigger, good quality lever harp. They could go up to like five or six thousand dollars. If you are looking for a pedal harp specifically, there are smaller pedal harps that exist that are not as expensive. Also buying used, like you can get a used pedal harp for seven to ten thousand dollars. Home stretch guys, there's only a few questions left. <laughs> Is there a venue that's been your favorite to either see a performance or perform at? I was thinking about this question earlier and I was just thinking about all the amazing venues that I've had the opportunity to perform at. There are so many. The first ones that come to mind are Carnegie Hall, of course, special for every musician, whoever performs there. I've performed in the KKL in Lucerne, Switzerland, and that's a really great concert hall. I think of like the Aspen tent. I spent a summer in Aspen at the music festival there. Anything in the mountains is magical. Also Banff in Alberta, the uh, chamber music hall. It's not a very big hall, but it's just such a little special venue. And I remember they have like a window behind where the musicians would be on stage. So you can see like the mountains and trees behind the musicians as they're performing. So it's just the little things that make these venues really special. What's your favorite key to play in? Doesn't have to be about easy with the pedals and stuff, just which one sounds the nicest to you. I get asked this question a lot, like what's your favorite note or what's your favorite key? I feel like this question is kind of like if you have a set of stairs in your apartment, which stair is your favorite? Like they're all kind of important. <laughs> so, uh, and they're all used equally. But to answer it, I feel like any keys that are in a flat key signature on the harp, whenever we have key signatures that are like naturals or sharps, the mechanisms are tightening the string 
one by one to raise the string up. So when we're in a key of flat, that means nothing is being engaged, especially if you're in a key of like C flat. In general, the rule of thumb is strings ring fuller on the harp when you play in a key of flats versus sharps. What's one of the limitations on the harp that composers need to know when composing music for the harp? There's quite a few. As you know, we don't play with our pinkies, so don't be writing any like five note chords. Also to be aware of how we play the instrument. So it's different than piano where our fingers are all here and we can just tap the keys and move like this easily. On the harp, we have to like put our fingers on the string, pluck the string, our finger goes to the palm of our hand and then we have to open our hand again. So we're a little bit limited by like, for example, repetition, like lots of repetitive notes. So like repeated notes on the harp just don't sound good nor work very well with our technique. The other thing you wanna think about is just the pedals. Be aware that every time you add in an accidental, our feet have to move. I encourage composers to write in the harp pedal work as they're writing, not for the harpist, because we usually do that stuff on our own anyway, but write it in as you're going, so then you're aware of how much our feet are moving and if it's even physically possible. Because it's not gonna be possible to flip five pedals within one quarter note, right? And you gotta space it out. That's kind of your crash course there. <laughs> Has being a musician hindered your love life? Well, <laughs> Totally forgot to wear my wedding ring for this video. I take my ring off when I practice and do recordings because it sometimes makes sounds on the wire strings. But yeah, I am happily married and he's a musician and we met at a music festival. So definitely it has not hindered my love life. <laughs> Have you ever passed gas while performing? These questions are hilarious. I kept this question in because I thought it was just really funny. <laughs> okay, if I'm being honest, no. <laughs> Knock on wood that it doesn't happen in the future. But I kept this in here because I have a funny story. I was doing a recording in orchestra and it was like a little break between recording segments that we were doing. One of the violinists wanted to get his buddy's attention. So he like took his violin bow, <laughs> like poked his friend in front of him. And I guess, I guess the guy like let one go. <laughs> and it was like loud enough, audible enough that it actually picked up on the recording. <laughs> I'm thankful something like that has not happened to me. <laughs> Have you paid your taxes in the last eight years? Yes, even freelance musicians and musicians in general, like myself, do have to pay their taxes. Yep. As a harpist, what do you think of Harpo Marx's playing and technique? I think he was amazing. He was an amazing harpist for being self-taught at that. He was so entertaining and his technique was like phenomenal. He showcased the instrument really well and brought a lot of attention to it. Last question, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around this long. Um, let me know in the comments if you've made it this far. I'm kind of curious <laughs> how many people wanted to watch this long of a Q&A. Have you gotten any piece requests that are just impossible to adapt to the harp? Yes, I have. And unfortunately, the one most asked song request that is just not playable on the harp is Flight of the Bumblebee. It's all chromatic work and for us to be able to play that, our fingers would have to go like this quite a bit, and it's just we can't get our fingers on the strings fast enough. Plus, in terms of the pedal work, it's all chromatic. So our feet would be moving as much as every note that we'd have to play, essentially, and our, just, our feet physically can't move that fast. So unfortunately, that's one of those songs I really wish I could play, but alas. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.